This is the course Mechanical Vibrations. And we are talking about two degrees of freedom system. In this presentation, we will talk about coordinate coupling and principal coordinates. My name is Carmen Mueller Carker. Part of the content of this presentation is adapted from our textbook, Mechanical Foundation from RAM, from chapters 5 and 6. In most general cases, for linear systems, a viscously damped two degrees of freedom system has the equation of motion of the following form. This is a matrix equation of two degrees of freedom, and this is the matrix for the mass, this is the matrix for the damping, and this is the matrix for the stiffness. All those metrics are symmetric, so these two terms are equal, those two terms are equal, and those two terms are equal. This equation reveals the type of coupling present in the system. If the stiffness matrix is non-diagonal, the system has elastic or static coupling. If the damping matrix is not diagonal, the system has damping or velocity coupling. If the mass matrix is not diagonal, the system has mass or inertial coupling. Both velocity and mass couplings come under the heading of dynamic coupling. The system vibrates at its own natural frequency regardless of the coordinates set that we choose to describe the motion of our system. Now that we have the equation of motion in matrix form, we like to find the response. The response will always be equal to the response to, to the initial condition, which is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution due to the external force applied. We have two different methods. The method one is finding the response of the two degrees of freedom system solving the system of the equation using the generalized coordinates. And being the generalized coordinates, the set of coordinates that we choose to describe the motion of each of the masses of our system. We have solved some problems using this method for initial conditions. The second method that we will introduce today with this presentation is finding the principal coordinates and decoupling the system of equation, finding the solution in terms of principal coordinates as as two, one degree of freedom system, and finding the response of the system in terms of the principal coordinates. The nature of the coupling depends on the coordinates used and is not an inherent property of the system. It is possible to choose a system of coordinates Q1 and Q2, which equations of motion that are uncoupled, both statically and dynamically. That means that all matrices will be diagonal. Such coordinates are called principal or natural coordinates. The main advantage of using these principal coordinates is that the resulting uncoupled equation of motion can be solved independently of one another. Therefore, the metric form of the system of equation will look something like that, where we have the acceleration vector in terms of the principal coordinates, the velocity vector, and the displacement vector. And the matrices will look all diagonal, and we have the vector of principal coordinates, which is Q1 as a function of time, and Q2 as a function of time. To obtain the principal or natural coordinates, we have to do the following change of variable. Our generalized coordinates will be equal to the modal matrix we found when we found the vibration modes of our system multiplied by the vector of principal or natural coordinates. The step to find the principal coordinates and final response for an undamped spring mass system will be the following. Step one will be finding the equation of motion in our set of generalized coordinates. In this case, we have inertia coupling and or static coupling. The second step is finding the eigenvalues or natural frequencies of the system by finding this determinant. The lambda will be equals to the eigenvalues of the system, which will be the natural frequency square. For two degrees of freedom system, we have two natural frequencies. The third step is finding the eigenvectors, which are the vibration modes. We will introduce each of these eigenvalues into our 
equation of motion, and then we will find the relation between these two amplitudes. The first step is to construct the modal matrix by putting in columns each of the eigenvectors or vibration modes. Step five is to do the change of variable that our generalized coordinate vectors will be transformed using the modal matrix times the coordinates. And then we introduce this change of variable here, and then we multiply the total equation by the transpose of the modal matrix. We have to multiply each of the components of each side of the equation. The step six is to do the matrix multiplication and get the uncoupled principal matrix. Be careful that the multiplication of matrix is not commutative. So you have to do this multiplication of these three matrices in the proper order. Once we do the multiplication, we get a diagonal matrix. It can be demonstrated that the modal matrices are orthogonal to the mass matrix and are orthogonal to the spring matrices. And that's why when we do this multiplication, we decouple the system, getting a diagonal matrix in terms of mass and in terms of stiffness. Now we can rewrite our equation of motion with the decoupled system or the diagonal matrices in terms of our principal coordinates. We also have to find a new force vector, which is also pre-multiplied by the transpose matrix of the modal matrix. With this change of variable, we were able to convert a two degree of freedom system into uncoupled one degree of freedom system. Then we have two equations that we can solve independently. These equations are neither static nor dynamic couple. These equations are independent to each other because they are in terms of the principal coordinates. Now that we have two independent equations, we will solve them as a one degree of freedom. The solution for this equation will be the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. The homogeneous solution for an undamped system has this form, and the particular solution will depend on the external forces applied. And the natural frequency of this system is the equivalent k divided by equivalent mass, square root of that. You will see that this natural frequency is the same that we found in step two when we found the eigenvalues of the system. The same for the second equation. And this natural frequency will be also the second natural frequency we find when we solve the eigenvalue problem. To find the initial condition in terms of the principal coordinates, we can invert our modal matrix to find the initial conditions in terms of the initial conditions of the system of generalized coordinates. Remember that to invert a matrix of two by two, we can use this expression right here. Or you can do it with your calculator. The very last step in our process is to find the solution in the original coordinates. To do that, we just pre-multiply the solution that we found in principal coordinates by our modal matrix. Remember that multiplying a matrix by a vector will be the multiplication of this row times the vector, which is a column, and then this row times this column. And then we get the response in terms of our generalized coordinates.